evening and all. Yeah, so Fishbone got put in a spliff. He's done out here. But anyway, a lot of people's asking me on my Instagram live and on here to do a story about my first night in prison or the first day I went to prison. So, it's 13th of March, 2007. No, the 15th, because 13th is when we got arrested. The 15th of March, I've gone to court. Um, I think it was Wimbledon Magistrates Court, expecting to get bail. The judge said remanded. I didn't understand. I was looking at my solicitor like, you know when your lip starts wobbling? You know, you know when you're young, your lip starts wobbling, you're in a cry. So that, Look at my solicitor. <laughs> Ramon. What, what, what did you mean, Ramon? <laughs> Judge. Ramon. It went from that to being in the cell, like, please. What did you mean, Ramon? Hyperventilate, you know, that goes, I don't think I'm going to jail. So, a lot of you guys sometimes don't understand that. Your freedom, someone telling you you're not allowed to, you can't go nowhere, you're going to prison. It's mad. Imagine you had plans that whole day and now they're saying you're going to prison. Yes, yeah, so I was crying, man. I can't even lie, I was going to cry. I was trying to pray to God. I was trying to make myself have superpowers, like in myself, that like, trying to see if I can turn, turn, back, turn back time, but it didn't happen. And I think I spoke about this before, so um, it put me on a, uh, a sweat box. So the sweat boxes, I don't know if you guys have seen it, it's normally run by Circle or Jamie. So they, they're these um, white bands and they've got cubicles inside of them. So what they do, they handcuff you. So I got handcuffed and then there'll be like maybe eight of you inside. It depends on what size. The, sometimes they've got the small vans, sometimes they've got the big vans. And I think this one was quite small, actually. there's only like four of us on the van. Um, so they escort you, handcuff you put you in a cubicle, cause you, you're handcuffed to one of the, one of the uh, jail, jail staff, so they handcuff you to themselves, and then they escort you over there, they put you in a cubicle, and the cubicles is smaller than the size of the toilet, but it's like you sat in a toilet, that's what it basically, but with no leg space basically. And then the outside windows, um, I mean, you can see it out of there, but it's sort of red tinted, red, red colored, but the people outside can't really see the inside, but you can see it outside. I just remember sitting there thinking, what the hell is this now? What, what have I done with my life? Where the hell am I going? And then they, 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 they un, 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 unchain you from the staff and then lock the door and firm it shut. And then just like, that's it. So you know, I'm going to prison. So I was sitting there contemplating, I'm going to jail. I was like, like with the sub again, the lips were going again. You know, remember in school, but not even school. Remember in <laughs> when your parents hit you, and like you, you you're trying to you're trying to not cry, or you got you got shot, like you're trying to not cry. You know, and you can't hold it on one, then you try to bite, and then it just it just all let out. It was one of those ones still, but then I heard my uh, they're saying the people's names, didn't it? The like um, Thompson, remember so and so. Kasanga, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Very emotional. And then someone went, yo, yo, hey, Moan, is that you? I'm like, who's that, who's that? It's Firma, man, it's Firma. My brother and Devon from school. I mean, I actually had a fight in school. Let me just touch on that. <laughs> the last time I saw him, before, actually, I saw him after that before. But me and the last, the, 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 the previous time in school, me and him had a fight. Imagine we're playing football, like I said, the baddest footballer in, in school. The kicking ball in the, in the playground, and I'm dubs in at everyone, dubs in at everyone. Me and him on the same team. I go and pass him, and he puts his foot out and me, trips me. I'm like, what? How am I going to trip me like that? You know, on a, on a concrete floor, there's also a graze. Like, you know when you graze like your, that part there? Nah, I got up and I went for him. And it was like, stop it. No, no, we did, we did, we did. But those days I, I had kind of like, not as a loose cannon, but once I get angry, I get angry. Like, it used to take a while for me to get angry. Once I get angry, I just thought, violate that. Why am I tripping me up for no reason? Me and him on the same team. So everyone's trying to stop me. And then and it kind of, 
batter down. Then as I'm walking, he tried to run and tried to fly kick me, and then it got into another. F- but yeah, me and Devin, Devin, Devin's cool people. That's just another memory to, to, to bring up about school days. But the beauty of that is that in school, more times when you fight with your friends, you guys can just make up after. Like, you might, you might not talk for a week, but like maybe 10 days later, you guys are cool again. So shout out to Earth Firma still. But they're like, yo, Mona, is that you on the bus? I'm like, yeah, 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 it's me, it's me. What's, what's going on? Then he's telling me, yeah, man, nah, it's calm, man. Like, I'm like, yeah, we're going to fail a minute. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he started telling me about the jail because he's been there before. You're telling me so and so is there, so and so is there, so and so is there. I was like, oh god, that's not that bad still. But he started telling me the names over there because in my head I was fearing, I was thinking, oh bloody hell, man. There's gonna be a whole load of bricks and boys, whole load of ghetto boys, whole load of other people from different areas. There's gonna be peep for man. And he just said me, nah, there's bare man from the ends over there. So that made me that that actually made me relax a little bit. I felt a bit more confident. I was like, okay, calm. So anyway, we're under we're under a minibus. I think it was on a Saturday actually that he's taking us to the jail. So we've gone there now. Did that happen Friday or Saturday? I can't remember. Gone there, I remember pulling up. And what happened? There's a, a main barrier that, so they need to open one barrier, let the van in, close that barrier, then open the other barrier. So they opened the next one and then went in. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm in jail. I'm in white, I'm in white. Um, um, police clothes because the, the, the police took my, all my clothes and put me in sort of uh, a white tracksuit and plimsolls so I come like I'm fresh like no trainers nothing I had nothing on me like and then obviously you've gone through induction the, the, the reception area they'll ask you your name and so on so but I, I, I don't know if you're like me I think waiting you know waiting around here yeah? I think it's one of the biggest torture they just hate waiting, like when you're in a queue, waiting in the bank, waiting for an appointment, wait, like waiting. I think I, f- I find it torture. I just like things getting done. But anyway, so we're there. They make us go and sit down, and we go through the sort of induction process. And then they do the search. So basically, like with searches, you get stripped but naked. They take all your clothes off of you. And what sometimes they'll let you keep your modesty by saying, "Oh, you, you can cover your cover your hands." You, you cover your penis and your uh, your testicles with your hands to sort of I don't know just to, 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 so there'll be no um, sort of accusation or nothing like that right because you never know someone might like young men and for them it's a turn on right I don't know but they make you uh, some some officers will have you cover your hands but more times that you have to lift up your hands and show what's there because they want to make sure that you're not concealed anything underneath your balls or nothing and then they make you squat so you, you squat butt naked. So when you squat butt naked, then to make sure that you ain't got nothing um, pr- uh, plugged up your ass, because that's how people get things in. So they just have to make sure of that. And then I don't think they had it at that period, but now most people have got a boss chair. So a boss chair is sort of a metal detector chair. So when you sit on it, it lets people, it gives them notice of if it's anything inside of your body. So, um, well, any metal things inside their body anyway. So they've done all of that. And I felt kind of violated. I'm like, wait. Not even my dad sees me naked at, at, at my big age and I'm gonna have these random strangers see me naked. And of course they'll make men do it, they won't make women um, um, strip search you. But but if, if it feels like a bit of a violation, it's that, like, wait a minute, like why are you taking off my clothes and making me take my clothes and you can see me naked and then they make you spin around as well. So it's a bit humiliating, I can't lie. It's a bit humiliating. So I felt embarrassed a little bit. I'm like, what's all this about, man? And in, in my book, I actually joke about it. <laughs> I think I made a joke about it, but yeah. Um, uh, then yeah, so after that, they give you like a, uh, they gave me prison clothes. So they gave me like some, I can't remember, some grey tractor bottoms and a, I think like a purplish jumper, I didn't think they matched it. I, I, they gave me socks. And then the infamous prison boxes were, but when you come fresh to jail though, they give you like the fresh ones. But like, you know in jail, this is the maddest thing in jail, yeah? If you not got your own boxes and stuff, you actually would wear boxes that everyone else wears. So there's like they've got like prison clothes. Basically, with the prison clothes it don't belong to. So with the prison clothes, you actually have to hand it back in after you wear it. You hand it in, put it in a dirty clothes area. They take it and then they wash it. And next week they bring back more. So you could be wearing next man's boxes next week. Part of prison they don't tell you about because if you ain't got family members bringing you anything. Can, or helping or supporting you, you're going to be wearing prison clothes. Some people try to keep the same boxes and stuff and try to wash it themselves. But more times, you'll be wearing the next man's boxes. But anyway, um, 
so I've gone in I've gone in um I've gone onto the wing and it's like it's late night when I've gone onto the wing. Or late afternoon, I can't remember, it's late afternoon I think. Um it's gone into the wing, um they gave me a bit of food from the surgery to go and eat. And yeah, it was it was it was it was like looking around, I thinking this looks like a youth centre. Um, cause there was a table tennis table, there was a pool table, and um, I was looking around. I figured this is a little like prison apart from the doors, but then you look at the barriers and you look. Oh yeah, we're, we're in prison, and I remember them saying, "Okay, you're going to yourself." So I was thinking, "Oh, I'm gonna be bored in the cell, man. There's nothing to do." I was thinking to start, I was just praying. I remember they gave me, um, I asked them to give me a Bible, so I was just thought, "I'm gonna actually read my Bible, man. That's what I'm gonna do when I get inside the cell." So they put me in the cell now. The cell is maybe. Half the size of a double bedroom. It's it's like a single room in a house, but even smaller than that. And they got like yeah, um, I had a, a single cell the first day, but on a bunk bed. So basically, the top bunk was empty, and the bottom bunk they gave me like a blue match. Actually, no, blue matches are just coming to force. Them days you had some sort of green, thin mattress, and then the bed is sort of like a, a just a metal frame with like a metal sort of uh, what do you call it. Can I call it? No, the netting. It's like a metal sort of basket type sort of uh, layout on top of the what you call it, as and then you put your what you call it. You put your um, mattress on there, and then the pillows were some dead green soft pillows, but they also introduced the blue pillows as well. But the pillows are mad. Everyone always complains about um, the pillows giving you spots, and it's it's very true. You find and you start finding you got little you get little spots in that on your back and that as well. Like, I'm not sure what creatures are in there, but everyone seems to get these little spots in there. But after a while, I go, I think once your body gets used to that sort of bedding or whatever. Um, so I went in the cell, then sat down, put my things down. They gave me bourbons, so I just boxed the bourbons. And then and I turned around, and I thought, oh, you damn, we've got a TV. I was like, rah. So I thought, you know what? At least there's something there. So um, put the TV on. And I th yeah, yeah, it was a Friday that I got there because I remember putting the EastEnders on. I was like, oh, I fucking at least I can get what she's doing. But these times I don't watch EastEnders for years. So, and more times than Joe, <laughs> Monday and Joe, don't let me lie to you, Monday and Joe love their soaps, you know. Holy Oaks, Emma Dale, Corey, even neighbors and them man get, get, get a watch that as well. Let me tell you, let me tell you how well, the Simpsons people bang out, bang off the Simpsons, the Simpsons that are very popular in Joe. Whenever a new series comes out, someone was like, oh, this is like when Homeland, Homeland was a big hit in jail as well. But anyway, so my first night, watched EastEnders, watching a few shows and that. But every time I'm trying to look for my phone, you know, we, we, so, we get so used to our phone. So imagine right now, someone takes your phone and you ain't got your phone for the rest of the day. You're going to be trying to pat yourself looking at your phone and think, oh, fucking I ain't got a phone. Then I was thinking about my missus at the time as well, kind of missus. Um, at the time, it was... Um, my bedroom uh, nerves, it was um, his uh, partner's um, uh, best friend at the time, and I, was, and I was dating her. And she was, she, was a, she was a good girl, to be fair. Like, she, she um, what do you call it, like, a week after that, like, bought me some stuff, bought my clothes in, got me, um, bought me a CD player, bought me my music and that as well. So, yeah, she was, she was cool people. Um, and then what, what had happened? Yes. At midnight, the TV got switched off. The TV, I was oh, like, piss, I remember I was watching a show. I thought, ah, oh, the TV got switched off. What about the TV? So basically, the officers goes around at midnight and switches your TV off. So basically, you have to have a clean bedroom. So the next morning, what they do in the morning, they come to your cell first thing in the morning about, I think it was 7.30 or something like that, 8 o'clock. And then you have to be up. You can't be sleeping in your bed. And I think they try to teach you about getting up and they sort of get you off the whole laziness, just sleeping around. Because that's what happens. A lot of people just sleep, 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 sleep till about whatever time on the rolls. And then they've not got the productivity to go out and get a job or go out. So it's about trying to get you up in the morning. So what they do, they come in the cell, check that your bed's made, check that your skirting's clean. They'll do all that, that trying to rub, rub the table to see there's no dust, check your TV, check the floors. And you have to get a hundred out of um hundred points if you get anything below a hundred. I don't know. I don't know if they still do it now, but at that time they switch off your TV. So at that first night I was pissed. I was like, ah, oh. and that's when it really hit me. When the TV was off, it was just me and my thoughts. I was thinking, what have I done with my life, man? 
I'm sitting in jail right now. I'm thinking, oh, fucking hell. I'm thinking about my family, thinking about my girl at the time, thinking about my football career. It's thinking of everything that's going on. I lost um, my friend a few months before, a month before that, Javari, he was killed. And I, I, I was just like, oh, what is going on in my life, man? And then you sort of just sit there thinking about all the things you could have been. I went back to my childhood, what would I have changed? I went back to when I first joined the Peckham Boys, like, had I just gone home that like, day, I was thinking about my football career. I was thinking about all these sort of things, but it's too late. You can think about them, but it's too late. You can't turn back time. So some of you young people who are now, who are here listening and watching, who are 14, 15, this is the time where you do your thinking. Don't do your thinking when it's too late. Do your thinking now. Look at the people around you and say to tell yourself, like, let me be honest. Does my man bring any positivity to my life? Does he bring any positivity to my life? What does what he encourages me to do, will it benefit my life? Or could it get me killed? Or could it put me in danger? Could it get me stabbed? Could it get me arrested? Those are the sort of things you need to look at. I mean, they'll still be your friends. Your friends are your friends. But you have to look at it realistically and say, you know what? And look, the fun, what, what, what's so funny is this, yeah? Like I always say, whoever as he is, listen, yeah? Most murder cases get solved. There's very rare ones that sort of like, they go, but most murder. So when you're going to ride out, I'll tell you what, let me tell you something, yeah? Britain, yeah, has the most CCTV. It might be China now, but at one point, Britain had the most CCTV in the world. The small little Britain. Our country, small little Britain, had the most CCTV in the world. So even if you think you're getting away with something, yeah, it's going to get traced back to you. So you might have started your journey to go and ride out. Let me give it, you, just, let's say you started at Clapham Junction, yeah? Let's see you guys in a minute. Someone's going to spot the car. Before you guys burn it, someone's going to spot the car. Police trace everything because that, that car would have been spotted maybe in the estate camera. The estate camera that you don't even know about. There's a little camera in the estate, in your estate, you might not even know about it. So it could have spotted you there. Yeah, You might not have been in a car there, but it might have spotted you with your friends. The camera would have, and your friends would have got in that car, for example, and you didn't even get in a car at that time. Yeah, But later on, that man has happened to go, okay, oh, remember that car? We saw in the estate with these guys. You might have thought you got away with the perfect thing, but it comes back and bite in the back. Because what they'll do, they'll follow the, the car, they'll look at the Skyway CCTV for ages, looking at where that car went, who went where, who... I mean, like I said, like with more times, they solve more cases. Some cases don't get solved. But do you, uh, do you think you're that lucky? Because you're going to be that unlucky one that they catch. You're going to be that unlucky one. You went to go and ride out, and you're going to be the unlucky one that they catch. Because sometimes people go and ride out and bear them go. And it's not even the person who done the murder who, who who gets convicted. It's the other guy. So you guys, you might say, oh, come on, go and punch that man up. You guys all go to go and punch that man up. And then one of them, one of, one of your people stabs them. He dies, but everyone gets away. And you're the one who gets caught because you got caught on CCTV. You didn't, you didn't stab the guy, but you was there. And now you can't snitch now. You can't snitch. So now you're facing a murder case. The guys who done it, you're like, yo, brother, sorry about that, you know. Like I didn't, I didn't even mean to stab him, but hold, hold that one for the team, minute. Hold that one. And you have to, because you decided to live that life. So this is your warning. I'm giving you the warning beforehand, because after it goes down, you can't not turn around and snitch, because you decided to be part of that life. So you can't turn around and say, oh, no, um, it was so-and-so, I wasn't. No, because you have now decided to be part of that life. So I'm giving you a pre-warning right now to come away from that life. It's up to you right now. Yeah, so what I say that before you go and ride that, just think, look at your friend and think, so my man wants me to go and do a madness, you know. Do you really want to do the madness? Cause I'll tell you the truth, when I was going to do cash boxes, my heart was beating. I did, I like, oh, I was really shook, I think, oh my God. And then obviously there'll be certain music that they'll play that might get me a bit pumped up, especially if, uh, Fug Motivation, that album. I will tell people that album used to gas me up. But sometimes you guys get gassed by your friend, like, yeah, gassed by the internet, gassed by... I'll tell you what, yeah, the embarrassment you receive today, yeah, won't even last five, six years. How many rappers and people you know who got beaten up, got robbed, people filmed them, now they're still living their life accordingly, they're just okay. But a lot of you guys might get beaten up and um, embarrassed on social media, and because you live in that moment, you can't take the criticism. You can't take the embarrassment. Everybody knows about it. You're meant to be a bad man, but now someone can see you got smacked up. 
cool. Everyone loses a fight, you know. We, we all don't win fights, you know. I've lost fights. I've won fights. We don't. We can't win all the fights. But at least you live to fight another day. Some of you guys were going doing madness, and then because you couldn't take the embarrassment, you went and doing madness, and then now it's peak. How many? How many of? You, how many people go out there and regret it later on? Yeah. I'll give a, a prime example, yeah? Um, SJ from OFB, yeah? I look at his story and, and it's quite unfortunate, yeah? Because from what I understand, he was a very talented footballer. And that's what resonates with me because I was a very talented footballer. I understand that he was a baller. Like, my man could kick ball differently, seriously. So I hear, I don't know, yeah? And that was the path that's going for him. But I think he just needed at that time a mentor. Some say, you know what? A bedroom, one of the oldest and engineers said, nah, bro, nah, man, you can't, you can't, like, bad him up, like, nah, bro, we love you, yeah, you're the man them, but nah, you go and do your football, you're not, you're not rolling with man today. Sometimes you have to give man that tough love, you know, that tough love, because if you get that tough love, even if he started hating you for it, he would be out on road right now, we have freedom, maybe playing football. Okay, the football didn't work out, then he had a second chance now, he had a second chance now on doing the music thing, and that started popping off for him. So, I don't know what people were around him at the time who, like, said, don't go. Like I said, we don't know whether or not, I mean, he's been convicted for it. He could be pleading his innocence. But if he did do it, we don't know. But the point is that who was around him to say, you know, you know what? Bro, the music thing is kicking off now, you know? Allow it. That's why I look at, like, his, his colleagues now. Um... Is it double double L's? Double L's? I might be wrong. Double Z or double L's? I, I think it's double L's to be fair. And um, band OK. I look at them and I say, there was a trio, right? And then that is there's two. So people around them need to guide them. The olders around them need to guide them. Don't fail them. Do not fail them. Do not fail them. Because as much as yes, they're on road. And where it's first and foremost, they'll show loyalty. If if one of them man them gets violated... Yeah, they're gonna want to show loyalty because loyalty is what we grow up in the streets. But people should be now, you, you, you man, it's not your fight, you know. You guys are doing something, no, it's not your fight. We will do, we will handle whatever we need to handle. This is not your fight because once they reach a, a certain pedestal, they should be then able to help other people. But what we don't tend to do is tell someone, nah, bro, don't do that, man. Don't. I told Brave, I told you guys. There were times that Ravel told, 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 told me, oh, no, you're not coming. And I said, like, why don't this guy like me, man? How come everyone's going to do these, uh, going to do the madness and I can't come? He's like, no, you can't come. And who knows? That could have saved me. That could have saved me massively because other people around me end up getting a murder charges and so on. So it's like, make sure you guide them. But anyway, back to what I was saying, like, my first night in prison. Yeah, it was just me and my thoughts and I was having so much regrets. Thinking, oh, my football's done. And, and that's what it is. That's what, like, you'll see people in prison, kind of, I guess, sometimes a pretense is a gas thing. Nah, yeah, we're having a great time. You're not having a great time. I remember, listen, in jail, we used to have parties, <laughs> yeah? Honestly, we used to have parties, yeah? Someone have uh, weed, I don't smoke, but someone, I, me, I'm just high off life. I'll be honest with you, I used to be high off life, but I like a good vibe. So someone would um, have weed, everyone would go and coach in someone's cell, play music. Everyone's having a good time dancing. But at the time you start enjoying yourself, when you look around, you're like, I'm just in here dancing with bare man them. Where's the girl? No girls. There's no girls. So you're just there dancing with man them. Don't get me wrong, you have to do what you can do. I mean, New Year's Eve was a big one for me. Whenever New Year's Eve, like, yeah, like someone will make illegal um, alcohol, hooch, and I don't really drink either. But I'll say, you know what? It's New Year's, why not? Cheers, let's have a drink. But it's not nice in there. It's not a good time. People show people like similar to Instagram. People don't show you. People don't show you the hard times. I won't show you my hard times. I won't show you my struggles. Everyone always shows the highlights. Cause there's things that I go through that I feel, oh, fucking, I'm tired. Like even right now, I'm tired. But I'll still come and do these videos and give a good persona and try to encourage people. But sometimes people are just tired, but they always show their highlights, and that's what they tell you, show you in jail. So don't let the people in jail gash up to make you think they're having a good time. They're not having a good time. They'll swap with you all day. If you told them, oh, you come back for a night, they'll leave you in there as well. <laughs> if you told you, oh, okay, okay, let's do a thing where let's swap for the night, but then you have to come back. They're not coming back. They're leaving you in there. <laughs> they're leaving you just like, you're safe. Yeah. So back to, back to first night in prison, I regretted everything I'd done. I was like, oh, 
I fucked up my life, man. Like, what am I done in my football career? I just thinking, I was thinking of all sorts. I was thinking, like, what am I gonna, what am I gonna do? I felt embarrassed for my parents, like, cause wait, is naturally people gonna blame them? Like, oh, what happened to your son? But no, no, when they've done their best, they're good. It's it's my decisions, but we don't look at that as well. And then now, you gonna have to start relying on your parents to start buying you stuff and bringing you money. That's money they need to go and pay their bills. Why you? Why are you now? Um, what do you call it? Making them now having to release extra money for you. You see it? So, but the next day, like I said, the next day I got up early in the induction wing and then um, I think they moved me to Nightingale like later on that day and I was there with my bedroom young Marv um, from uh, Woolly and um, he's like a long time friend that I've known from, from, from the road. We used to play football all the time. Another bad boy footballer, I can't even lie. He, he, he's top five selected when it comes to football. I'm trying to join, make him join Hackney we can see next season. But he's top five selected and he's, he's, he kind of like put me, show me the ropes in jail. Like this, that, this, this, this. And yeah, it was calm, man. It was proper calm in there. And it, it kind of became like a brotherhood when you're in there. You have to sort of make friends. I mean, there was times where the UC fights and, and so on. But when I was in Feltham, I didn't see much bullying at the time. I think it's later on. When I was in HGP ISIS, that's where I saw a lot of bullying. But in 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 um, film, I didn't see much bullying. Everyone seemed to get along. People from different areas would just sort of chill, play table tennis. No one could touch me on table tennis. You man saw what I done to Joe Black in one of the previous videos. I used to offer people canteen to buy it to, to beat me at table tennis. That's how it really was. And I got no backhand. I got no, my backhand is shit. I can't slam my backhand, but I slice it. Come with your, you slam your backhand, I just slice it back to you. Come, I slice it, but I can't give you that. I can't give you that. I just have to slice it with my forehand. I don't want to give out too much technique because people will be telling me, Bobby, I'll beat you. You're not beating me for, for shit. But yeah, so in a nutshell, yeah, my first night in jail wasn't um, pleasant. Had a lot of regrets, lots of thinking. Had a cry, I prayed. Um... Yeah, I think I had an honest conversation with God at the time as well to say, you know what? I'm sorry, man, because my life shouldn't have been like this. I was in top set in school. I was a talented footballer. What am I doing here right now? But so it goes. But I hope you guys were listening are taking heed. Like some people think, oh, you might be thinking, yeah, you talk sense, but I'm doing what I'm doing. You don't need to, bro. I'm just saying you don't need to, man. Find, find your niche. Find that passion in life. I say this all the time. Think outside the blocks that's to think outside the estates think outside the gangs think outside the ops the world is huge the world is big do you even want to go brazil do you want to go tokyo go australia go egypt go greece go iceland canada and there's so much place you can go in the world, but you guys just stay in your blocks. Think outside your blocks, man. Think bigger. Think big. Think great. The world is limitless. Some of you guys are never even going on holiday, and some of you guys will never even go on holiday because you're doing life in jail. Imagine. But anyway, that's my piece for the night. So basically the story of uh, my first night in jail.